This week, Jess celebrates a 300 million view milestone, Jamie versus a series of unfortunate events, and we talk chalupas. All this and more on this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. <sighs> Happy Canadian Day, eh? One. Whoa. That made Memphis jump. <laughs> <laughs> She was sound asleep. I'm sorry, honey. Oh, we're off to a good start already. Yeah, I'm sorry. Everybody from the podcast land says hi, Memphis. She's just staring at me with like the most evil look. Like, how dare you? How dare you snap wake me up? (laughs) (laughs) All right, here we go. Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me at RFS Stan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Blogs. Oh, Jess, it's already July. Holy I, cow. Yeah, what happened to the... the we're halfway through 2020! I know, <laughs> right? It's Wednesday, uh, as always, when we're recording. And um, this weekend's 4th of July. Yahoo! Yeah, that's so crazy. I feel like it's just all happening so fast. Let me ask you if this happens to you all the time, since you've been creating at home for a long time and i've only been sitting at home for about eight or nine months how like the days just feel the same like i have i don't care what day it is i don't it doesn't matter if things happen on a friday night or on a monday morning it all just feels the same to me so i know fourth of july is on saturday which is in a few days but it just doesn't feel like any anticipation to get to something like that see i think i've got to a point where i have more of a format a uh, routine than you do because like I know when our game night is and I know you know so I know I can always look forward to game night um, and there's like certain things that I do every week that I help me remember what the days of the week are and like I always leave my house in the afternoon and try to go eat at the deli and I try not to work on the weekend so even though I work from home I try not to be sitting at my computer all day long on Saturday and Sunday. You know, Jamie and I are trying to be out and doing stuff, you know, because our friends are off of work and blah, 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 blah. So I still feel like I have a semi-normal routine. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, even though, like, most days I literally am here at my computer most of the day, but I still feel like I know what day of the week it is. Like, I also have really scheduled out videos, so, like, I know I have to do this for this day. Like, tomorrow... Well, today, actually, um, I have to go get all of the stuff to make the uh, strawberry banana ice cream for dogs, which that video goes up on Friday, but I'm filming it tomorrow. So tonight I have to go get everything and I have to do a test run to make sure that the idea that I'm using is even going to work. God, I hope it works. (laughs) Because if not, I'll have to spend all day tomorrow figuring out a better way to make strawberry ice cream for dogs, strawberry banana ice cream for dogs work. Um, So I feel like... Like you said, because I've been doing this for so long, I feel like I have more of a routine figured out. Huh. How do you get over the fact of like, I feel like if I'm not sitting at my computer 24-7 a day, I feel guilty or I feel like I'm in trouble. You will never get over that. Never. I The minute I try to do anything else, I always think about something that I could be doing that it relates back to work or something that I didn't get done that I should be doing instead of spending time doing something else I think that the you'll never get over that feeling but I think you have to force yourself to do those things and that's I think the importance of having your like a to-do list every day or a goals list every day of I want to finish these five things when those five things are done that doesn't necessarily mean you're done for the day it just means you accomplished the things you needed to accomplish now you've got extra time say you know if Crystal's still at work and you're like oh I've got an hour till she gets home Well, you could take that hour and have an hour to yourself, or you could take that hour and you could put it into something that maybe you were going to get done tomorrow. And then you just kind of get, you know, you start to get ahead of things that you need to be doing for work. But that guilty feeling that I should be doing work feeling never, ever, ever goes away when you run your own business because you, you run your own business. You're the boss. You're the person that's making it all happen. So it never goes away. Welcome to... Business ownership. <laughs> <laughs> so, 4th of July is this weekend. Do you have any plans? Uh, no. I have no idea what we're doing. Our town is still doing the fireworks. They canceled our parade, which sucks because I really love our parade. But they canceled mm-hmm. our parade, and they canceled the um, the marine sanctuary used to do, like, a, I don't know what they called it. They did a big festival over there where they did, like, cardboard boat races and all this stuff, and... 
there was food and music and helicopter rides and it was just really cool to walk over there and see but they canceled all that so i don't know if we are hi akira <laughs> hey you're distracting me um i don't know if we are going to the fireworks the city fireworks or if we're just gonna go shoot off fireworks on our own because i still have some from when you were here and we could easily just go do that so i don't know what are you gonna do i just gonna be here i guess i don't know like i said it's 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 hard i i don't feel like it's independence day i don't feel like i've been like working so hard just so i could have like this one extra day off because do people get friday off is that what happens when fourth of july is on a saturday they get friday or monday off or something like that i think only like like I don't think everybody does. Most people yeah, still so, have to work. I don't know. Maybe nothing. I, I Here's the thing. We, we talked about this before. Like, I don't want to throw poppers at the ground and set off crummy fireworks because I went to the Mecca of firework land and shot off all those things in the sky. And now yeah. I, I don't I don't want to do that. It's going to be really hot. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's nowhere to go. Uh, here in California, we're shutting back down slowly. So all the beaches are closed. Um, all the bars, all the, like, uh places to go and hang out are closed so it's not like i can just get out of town and go somewhere all the trails are closed again so you can't really go hang out in the mountains not that i'm like a mountain person anyway i'm more of a city uh what did you would you call them city it i'm more of a city (laughs) it so i'm not i'm not really sure i'm not really sure it could be nothing it just everything feels so numb to me and not in a bad way but like like um everything just feels so numb and i'm going a little bit crazy being inside the house right but I don't know what to do. I, I feel like I've, I've, I'm a turtle, and and this is my shell, is my house, and I just live inside there. Well, see, and it's hard because normally, like our normal Fourth of July routine, and I think we talked about this last year. Uh, you know, normally we would get up, we would go to the deli, we would block off our own parking spaces, even though there are parking spaces. We would block them off, and then everybody would come to the deli. You know, friends of ours and family, and we would all sit and watch the parade. And that usually included us going in and out of the deli because it's you know ninety degrees and it's hot and it's right. you know cement city downtown. So it's like you go out, you watch for a little while, you go back in, you grab a drink, whatever, and you know everybody stays for lunch after, but it's closed to the public, so it's like our own little private parade party. And then after the parade, like we usually come home, make sure we take care of the dogs, because I don't normally take the dogs down to the parade. Last year I did. Kira got to go last year because she, she was just a baby. She was just a baby. Hmm. I think Charles and Thor came up last year as well for our 4th of July festivities. Awesome. But that's usually what happens like some you know usually friends come in from out of town we're all having a good time after the parade we go home you know sometimes we'll hang out here like you know now we've got the pool so we probably could have gone in the pool or something and then usually about three o'clock four o'clock in the afternoon we head out to my aunt's house because she has a cottage on the lake and we go hang out there and we do hamburgers and hot dogs and we take the dogs and we go swimming and then we head back into town and we watch the fireworks. I, this year, literally have no idea what the plan is because, you know, my brother and Danielle have a new baby. Like, they're not going to take a new baby to the fireworks, so that's not going to happen. Are we going to go shoot fireworks off at mom and dad's house or at Aunt Pat's house? I don't know because I don't think John Carl and Danielle are going to come because they got a little tiny baby. Like, I, I, like, I don't... You know, none of our friends really can come up because, well, everybody's not supposed to be traveling and like, you know, our local friends, but they've all got family and stuff too. Mm-hmm. So like, I really have no idea yeah. what is happening for 4th of July. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, heck, I don't even know what's happening tomorrow. I, I almost know, huh? forgot today. <laughs> I almost forgot today was Wednesday. I seriously, no joke. I thought today was Tuesday. Oh, I wow. kept thinking. Like that. I, yeah, yesterday I thought yesterday was Monday. And I think part of it is is because I've had so much so many projects that had due dates and I was trying to get them done and uh-huh. everything kind of started to overlap and now I'm just like, "Oh, oh, it's July. Oh, hello July." <laughs> no, I remember that it was Wednesday only cuz I need to put out this podcast. <laughs> I know, That's like why. I I for some reason I thought I don't know. I thought we had an extra day. I don't know. You know, I just wanted an extra day. That's all. It's just, you can just you know. pretend it's Tuesday. Honestly, it just makes no difference. I can't pretend it's Tuesday because I have due dates for things. <laughs> like, you know, eventually once you figure out how to upload videos on specific days, you'll realize you have due dates for things too. Nah, I'm just <laughs> flou- I'm just floundering. Floundering <laughs> everywhere. So speaking of uploading, just 300 million views on Gone to the Snow oh Dogs. Holy gosh. cow. We are not done celebrating this milestone. 
It's so crazy. Like, that's a lot of that's a lot of views. We that should, is a uh, lot of views. I should break it down and figure out how many like hours of. Well, I we I wouldn't know because YouTube didn't always track watch time. Like my watch time hasn't been tracked from the beginning of YouTube, so there's no way to really tell like how many hours of people's lives have been have been sucked up by my videos on the dog's channel. It, it's going to be a lot, <laughs> and it's one of those things where if you add them all together, it's more than a lifetime's worth for one person. Like, oh, like yeah. it's going to be more minutes than one person could watch in their whole lifetime. Oh, 100%. I, oh, now, now, now I'm sad that it doesn't show that for like forever can you just tell me what my watch time was was for forever <laughs> that is crazy but good job that is awesome all that hard work and all that time you spend not knowing what day of the week it is <laughs> right 300 million that's so many numbers i'm looking at the number on screen that's like eight zeros and then three yeah it's uh it's already higher it, than that yes it is already it is already higher than that's that. that's the thing i went and looked at your stats i think yesterday or the day before when i was preparing notes for the podcast and it was already up over another million yeah it's uh it's kind of crazy the um according to my dashboard on youtube they started tracking watch time in september 1st 2012 so mind you i started making videos november 29th 2009 so for at least those first couple of years, they didn't even track watch time. Do you want to guess how many hours of watch time my videos have had since September 1st, 2012? Holy cow. Uh, honestly, I have no idea how to quantify it. So I'm going to say like a little over a million. <laughs> you're, you're off. You're, you're, you're off. Higher or lower? Higher. Oh, yeah. Like 50 million? Uh, 15 million. 15 million watch hours? 15 million watch hours. So what do I have to divide that by to figure out days? 24, by 20, right? By 24, right. So 15.4 million divided by 24 is, so this is days, 641,666 days. Now what do I have to divide that by? 365? Yeah, sure. For years? Uh-huh. 365. You can see I am really bad at math. I have to say all this stuff out loud. Mm -hmm. So dividing that by <laughs> div dividing that by 365 gives us since December since September 1st, 2012, the dogs have sucked down uh, 1757 years of people's lives. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is that is lifetimes. That's a lot of lifetimes. Let's say the average life expectancy of somebody is what? We'll say 85. So we'll divide it by 85. So at least 20 people have died while watching my videos. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. <laughs> that is so crazy. They need better analytics. They need to, they need to count giggles. They're like, how many giggles is that? <laughs> how many just giggles are there? Wow, Holy that is cow. crazy. Just for you, just for little old you. Just for the dog's channel. That doesn't include, like, all the views on the Facebook videos, all the views on the vlog channel, all the views on everything else. Holy cow. Oh, I... That's impressive, I never know how to. I never know how to feel. Like, when I first saw the 300 million, I... No, no joke, guys. Like, I cried because I'm a big baby. So I cried, and then I said that to Jamie. I'm like, I don't... I feel so, like, humbled, like, that people want to watch what we do. That people love the dogs so much that they're so, you know, just so into what they do. I don't know. It's just yeah, a weird feeling. I don't get it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Everybody <laughs> loves your stuff. You do a lot for a lot of you do a lot for a lot of people with your videos more than you know. So, congratulations. Good job, Jess. Thanks. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh, speaking of that, who was in Dogster Magazine? First of all, who named that magazine? <laughs> I haven't even that's funny because like I took all those pictures and I plan to like share it and do a little write-up on it haven't even done it yet I no, have the magazine it, sitting right here though it'll be good you can you can throw me the pictures and I'll, we can we can throw them in the podcast group or something like that yeah that'll work but dogster magazine oh my gosh yeah. what what is that magazine about just all dogs dogs yeah it's like it's a dog friendly magazine for people who have dogs and for pet ownership and like it's got like tips and tricks and you know like what was this one this one was for the love of dog 12 healthy eating tips tips easy way to survive the puppy stage keep your senior dog sharp nine behavior issues solved it's just a magazine oh a dogster sounds like an online dating app for your pet 
It kind of does. Yeah, you can paw left or you can paw right, and if there's a connection, dog- then they can go to the dog park and sniff butts. There's a uh, seven of our favorite dog-friendly national parks, which is actually really cool because I found out that Olympic National Park in Washington mm-hmm. is uh, dog-friendly, that they have certain trails that are dog-friendly, which made me want to go back there. And then I found out that Cuyahoga Valley in Ohio, where I've always wanted to go, also has a bunch of dog-friendly trails. There's like 110 miles of dog-friendly hiking trails or something like that. You know what they need to add to that list? When I was doing some research on the Trivia Channel, they have, at the JFK Airport in New York, they have this like Dogtopia place in there with swimming pools and places to walk your dog. And it looks all futuristic and it's inside the airport for your dog. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it looked so modern, and it showed pictures of, like, obviously, golden retrievers, and they're swimming and stuff, and it's like, I don't get it. Like, my dog doesn't get to go hop in, my virtual dog does not get to go hop into the water before we're getting on a flight. Or do they? (laughs) I mean, maybe they do. Maybe it's for after they get off the flight. I don't know. You you should see, see these pictures. It looks way super crazy, and it looks like it's real. I mean, there's a lot of places that have, like, dog patios in airports and stuff for when you travel was with your pets. This was a whole wing, and it was huge. Yeah. It, was, it was, like, hundreds of square feet, and it was huge, and it was all modern for your dog, and it looked it looked pretty cool. So, back to Dogster Magazine. So, what were you in it for? So, I got interviewed about being a pet influencer, I mm-hmm. guess they call it. <laughs> take pride, um, take I, pride in what you do. Yes, you are a pet influencer. Right? No, 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 no. I'm a social media content creator. Okay. I like I like that title better than pet influencer. I don't I, know why. Because but, influencer gets looped in with like people that only use the selfie part of their cameras. Yes, and I feel like I I feel like feel like what I do is more than just a pet influencer because it's not just the dogs. I do so much more than that. So I'm always like, I feel like I'm just a social media content creator. I'm an that's, entrepreneur. Let's run with that. That's fine because I guess influencer is <laughs> hard, even though that you influence people's opinions on how they should be treated with dogs. But that's not how the word influencer, which I think influencer is in the dictionary now. Uh, it, that's not really how it, it, it's worded. It's more like people that make right. the, make the make the money. I guess you, right. you associate influencers with money. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I was uh, I was interviewed by a friend of mine who was writing an article for this magazine, mm-hmm. and they wanted to know about, you know, social media success and how to be an influencer. So they wrote a little article on it, and they asked us a couple of questions. And, I mean, we just had a couple of paragraphs in there, but, like, there's a picture of me and the dogs in there, and there's a picture of, of Memphis and Kira and in there and actually uh, one of the other people that was in it is uh one of the girls i've been following on tiktok for like forever who has this big newfoundland and this cute little corgi dog so like it was kind of neat it was kind of being kind of neat to be in there with a couple different people and i yeah. thought it was neat that they asked us to do it because there's so many pet influencers and there's so many people that do this like why did you pick us I mean, you know, I guess it's because I, I I honestly don't know. The girl that wrote the article could have picked anybody, and she picked us. But she's also been watching what I've been doing for a really long time, so right. maybe that's why. She has 300 so. million views. I, that's so Those crazy. are facts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good jobs. It looks like the dogs are on the up. I mean, stocks are high, views are up, and, and right. magazines... I we mean, just sh- hit nine. We, ju- we just hit nine hundred and fifty thousand subscribers on the dogs channel as well. Oh, on pace to hit that hit that million by the end of the year. Yeah, wow. yeah, that is good. Let's keep up on the Jess hype here. Jess, um, <laughs> <laughs> how's it going with the swimming pool? I heard you guys got a swimming pool put up. We we finally uh, decided that we were gonna put the pool back up, which which I want to spray paint the side of it and write Shelby's pool on it in purple, but I'm not going to because why I not? I don't know. <laughs> it's your life. You should do that. Who? Come on, everybody. Who wants Jess to get a rattle can and tag up <laughs> and tag up Shelby on the side of the pool? I mean, it was crazy because twenty four, not even twenty four hours, twelve hours before that, we were talking about how there was no pool. There was not going to be a yeah. pool. Yeah. And then poof, so instant pool. We had talked about that we weren't going to do it. Jamie mm-hmm. and I had this big discussion, and we both were like, you know, we bought the pool for Shelby and. We both felt guilty after because, like, we should have bought it a long time ago. But we were going back and forth. Do we want an in-ground pool? Do we want a, Do we want an above-ground pool? Do we want a real above-ground pool? Or do we want one of these Inatex, put it up and take it down every year pools? Like, we went through these motions. And I'm not even kidding. I think we went through this every single year since we moved to this house. 
So we've been here since 2011. Do we get the pool? Do we not get the pool? Do we do- no? We could just take right. the dogs to the lake. And then every year we just satisfied the swimming need by taking the dogs to the lake. Like we don't need a pool. There's a lake right up the road. There's a you know my my aunt has a cottage on the lake. My parents are on a lake. We could take the dogs swimming anytime we want. And then last year when Shelby started to not feel that great, we were like we're doing it. We're getting her a pool. She deserves to have a pool. And like, we had that like inflatable, not inflatable, but that like balloon type pool. We had had that for a year or two, I think. So we had had a little bit bigger of a pool, but we decided we wanted something big enough for them to actually be able to swim in. And we got this pool and we got it for Shelby. So, you know, Shelby passed away like a month and a half after we got the pool. We got the pool in early August for her birthday. Cause that was actually her birthday present was mm-hmm. that pool. And then she passed away September 5th. So her birthday was August 8th. She passed away September 5th. So we didn't have it that long. And then this year when we went to go set it up, every time we went to go pull that box out of the garage, we we just, both of us were like, we can't, I can't do it. I told Jamie, I'm like, I can't do it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't even like the the deck that's out there because I knew it was built for the pool. So we right. kind and of went back a, and forth. That's a very nice deck, by the way. Yeah, it's, Jamie's pretty good at building yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was a very nice deck. I was sitting <laughs> on it one of the nights we were out there. I was sitting on it, and it's it's very nice. You don't want to let that thing yeah. go to waste. No, and I mean, Kira uses it to spy on the neighbors, so. <laughs> I mean, it would have been nice if you had figured all this out, like, you know, the week I was there, so I could have gone swimming. We could have oh, So just, you could have helped. We could have had a, we could have had a belly flop contest. We could have watched you have your own belly flop contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all up and running. Have you gotten in it yet? Um, yeah, we that well the night we I told you we weren't gonna do it that we decided we weren't. It was game night that night, and like Lana was over and Greg and Eric were over and we were talking and it was hot and we kept talking about the pool and all of a sudden Jamie turned around and he goes we're gonna put the pool up tomorrow, and I went yeah and he goes yeah and I went. And we and I'm like, all right, deal. And he goes, deal. And we shook on it like we were making this contracted deal, right? That we're well, both gonna just we're both gonna like suck it up and put the pool up. And I think Eric even said, why don't you want to put the pool up? So we told him the story, and he's like, no, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. And <laughs> went, but because our friends were here, we like went on and played games. And then the next morning. I got up and I came in here and I was doing some work and I heard water running because I can hear when the water turns on for outside and I thought Jamie was watering the grass. And I'm not even kidding. Like he was inside and outside. He had made coffee and I thought he was just out working on the yard like he does. And I got up and looked out the window and he already had the pool up. He was so fast at doing it and he did it by himself. Just boop, boop, boop. There it is. It's up. And I walked out there and I went, oh, the pool's up. And he goes, yeah, I just did it. And it's actually in today's vlog. The vlog that went up today oh, good, is okay, good. us putting up the pool. Right. So that's today's video that just went live a little bit ago oh. on Snow Dogs Vlogs. Awesome. I was uh, I was looking for topics because, you know, it's very hard to find topics for the show sometimes. And I ran across on Dignation. Do you remember Dig.com? D-I-G-G.com from Kevin Rose? Yep. That is still alive. So I don't know how, whoever he sold it to. They still have that thing up and running. And there's a picture of this golden retriever floating on three pool, pool noodles on the front of Dig, saying that this golden retriever is chilling harder than any dog has ever chilled. Jess, you got to get those pool noodles, and you got it. Uh, we we got to beat this. We got to beat this golden retriever. Wait until you see the picture. Hopefully, I'll send you today because John Matthews coming over to go swimming in the pool. I bought the dogs a dog floaty. Oh, that's gonna be so fun. Yeah, I bought them their own little dog floaty. Jamie and I were talking about putting a shed where the pergola is because we never use the pergola. We're Wait, like, we should what? probably just What's the little pergola? thing that the little thing that sits behind the um behind the camper with the table. Oh yes. Did you notice how we never sat there? We'd always pull the chairs out, but we never sat there. Well, I didn't know you called a bunch of falling down old you know stacks of wood that are up like a awning a pergola. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh okay okay yeah that would be cool. We. We thought about uh, actually putting a shed there. And then as I keep buying all these pool toys, Jamie uh-huh. goes, we should probably put a shed there. I'm like, yeah, I can keep all of my stuff in it. All the agility equipment, all the dog sled stuff, all the pool stuff. And he goes, that's actually a really good idea. I'm like, yeah. And then we can actually clean out the back garage and make it usable for you to actually work on cars in or do whatever we want back there. So that might be something that happens this year as well. I was already looking at sheds. So Jimmy put up this pool. How long was he out there pulling up this pool? Because according to his back... <laughs> it was like all day long what was up with that 
It was all day long. Well, it takes all day because you have to, because it's not like a, it's, it's a box pool. So you put it up and you have to make sure that the line are straight and you have to make sure things don't lean and you, the legs don't sink. Yeah, that's so not as a one person job. He, well, he did it all by right? himself. Um, so as he's out there and he's making sure all this stuff is happening, you know, it's hot and it's sunny and, you know, he didn't have a shirt on. About uh, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, um, my buddy, my buddy Dan, not you, my other buddy Dan. What? There can only um, be one. We have to yeah, fight to yeah, the he, death. He's got the same car as you too, but his is kind of cool. Yeah, I've cool. met Dan. Actually, he's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, Whenever I find anybody that's my name, it's not like, ugh, there can only be one. I'm, like, stoked. It's like the Dan Club. Remember I told you the story of how when when Facebook first started, I tried to start the Dan Mosley Club, and I invited everybody in the world that was named Dan Mosley, and not one of them accepted my friend (laughs) request at all. I'm like, no, we have to unite to form Dantron. Like, what are you guys doing? So, no, Dan's a cool guy. I like Dan. Yeah, he he stopped by. He actually... um... Not to derail the story, but... No, I'm going to derail he... it. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I like Dan because we went to his house. You asked what he was doing today, and he was going to stack cars. Yeah. He was yeah. going to stack old cars. Like, I don't even know what that means, but he, in my <laughs> mind, he was going to take a car and put another car on top of another car. That's what he was going to do. Yeah, yeah. So, cool in my book. Okay, continue. So, anyway, he stopped by because he had gone down to Ascoda. He Somebody had put an ad on Facebook, and they were like, I lost my purse in the Asabal River while... Uh, kayaking or canoeing or whatever well dan does scuba diving and he works down in oscoda so almost every day after work he puts on his scuba gear and he dives the river bottom and the asabo river in oscoda is a very highly people take tubes and kayaks and canoes and a lot of people drink and float down the river which means a lot of stuff falls into the river Uh uh-huh so Dan goes down there and he scuba dives to the bottom of the river and almost every time he comes up with like he's found cell phones and keys and all this stuff and he takes pictures of it every time he's like oh here's all the stuff I found today here's the find for the day and he really enjoys it like it's his it's his hobby one he loves scuba diving two he's like a fish that's really, really cool he can monetize that I'm just thinking I like keep telling I, him that I'm super I, interested now I had no idea. Have, you have no idea how many times I've had the conversation with him. And oh. if I had the time, I would go with him and just film it and make the videos myself. Because it is the cool. He has found bottles from like the 1920s. He always finds the coolest stuff. Cell phones. Like he's found like a couple iPhones. iPhones. Oh yeah. <laughs> sunglasses. He doesn't need a and, magnet. Like, expensive sunglasses like Oakley's and all these like expensive stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, but it's going to be those 90s Oakley's. Nobody wants those anymore. Oh no, wait. Those are back. Oh, you <laughs> the wraparounds he, are back. He finds stuff that's been there forever, and then he finds stuff that people lost yesterday. So crazy. So there's a section of the river called the Whirlpool, and it's a really strong current in the river. The reason people float down this river is the river has a pretty decent current. So you can put in at one end, and without paddling, you can float to the pickup spot. Pretty At a pretty good rate of speed, too. Um, used to be a logging river. They would cut the trees down, throw the logs in the river, and the logs would float down out to the lake, and then they'd load them up on boats. So part of the problem with the river when you scuba dive there is there's logs under the water that are called log jams, and they're trapped under the water, and the current and the rocks and the dirt have just kind of jammed these logs. So when you scuba dive where there's faster current or on certain curves or like in the whirlpool area, you really risk a chance of being sucked under these logs. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you're there by yourself and you don't have a rope for somebody to get you out, it can be very dangerous. So, now that you know all that, there was a post that went up on Facebook. This woman lost her purse in the river. And she was offering a $250 reward, because that's how much money was in the purse, to anybody that could try to find it. So, it was Saturday morning. Dan grabbed all of his gear. He called her up. Where'd you lose it? She met him at the river and she said, we were right here when it fell out of the boat. And he said, okay. She goes, do you think you're going to be able to get it back? And he goes, well, you gave me a pretty good idea of where it is. He goes, and unless it got sucked down the river, I should be able to find it. More like you give me a pretty good price for the bounty. Right. I'm going to go so find it. He had a, he has a 10 pound, a 10 pound anchor that he'll drop and he ties to himself and he'll that part of the reason you do that is because you don't want to be drugged down the river so the anchor like grabs on and then the as he's underwater the undertow doesn't suck him further down the river so he always kind of knows where he's at in the river so when 
he threw the he threw the anchor in the water and he went down and the first thing he realized was how bad the river was in that spot he said i shouldn't have done this alone i should have had somebody with me he goes i had no exit plan there's there's a lot of spots in the river where you can't get out of the water it's like big banks so you're really like trying to crawl up these banks if you need out of the water and anyway it's he, he didn't think it clearly he just went down there to do it and uh he said there was quite a few times where he felt that anchor come loose and he thought he was going to get sucked underneath these logs. But he said after about an hour of looking, he found the purse and the strap from the purse was hooked to a log underneath the water. Oh, nice. And he found it, pulled it up and there had the $250 in it, had all of her other stuff in it. So she had already left. So um, he took it home and opened it all up to air it out for her. So hopefully it would be dry and then they were going to meet up the next day and he was going to give her her purse back. So he... He found the purse, but on his way home, he stopped by here to tell us that amazing story, and his adrenaline was still pumping. He was still shaking. And he told me, he goes, it was scary. He goes, it wasn't a smart thing to do. That doesn't I, sound I like it. He's like, I should have had somebody with me. He's yeah, like, a camera crew. I know. I, you know, man, I was telling him, I'm like, dude, I watched this YouTube channel where this guy does this stuff for like a living, where he goes and he, he throws his own cars. stuff in the water and then he fishes it back out. No, not that guy. I oh, okay. watch a guy <laughs> that does this for the police, and he's, like, one of the best in the country. And, like, police will call him and be like, we have a car that we lost, and we know it went in the river. And he'll fly in with his camera crew and all of his gear, or he'll drive in, yes. and they dive down, and they I've find seen these stuff cars. like that. Oh, it's so cool. I'm like, dude, you could make, you could have a YouTube channel. But yeah. he looked at me, and he said, yeah. And, you know, where are you going to find all this extra time? And I went, oh, yeah. Next time, yeah. when I'm out there next time, he somebody better lose something because we're going. We could, I, I have no problem with that. We should totally do it. That is so cool. You could call it like dive chasers or something like that. It's it's so neat. It's it's so cool the things he finds. Like, but, right. yeah, well, what, so, what do you, what do, you so, do though, Jess? Because here, here's the thing for me. Like, I would give her her purse back and she'd try to give me the $250 and I would do that. Oh, it's okay thing because, like, I just want to help. But at the same time, oh, no. I, d- I do like two hundred fifty dollars. Like, I mean, who doesn't, right? He kept the money. He kept the money. She wanted him to keep the money, so he did. He's like, yeah, you know, he had to drive it- and drive down there, and his it's life. It's an hour. It's an hour down there from where we live. He drives an hour to work back and forth when he goes to work. You mm-hmm. know, so he drives an hour to Ascoda every day. So yeah, you know, he kept the money. But uh, yes, so because but- I mean, how many cars did he not stack that day because he was down there <laughs> fishing? Well, he didn't. He didn't work on his Jeep project is what, what it was, you know, so he's so close to getting it on the road. He's very close to getting it back on the road, but that's what he didn't do that yeah, day. I think that's but really he's, neat. He stopped by our house and he told us this big story. And as we were talking, Jamie was in the pool and he turned around and I went, oh, uh, you might want to put some sunscreen on. And I heard Dan goes, oh, yeah, you're burnt. You're already you're toast. You're already toast. So he walked out, Jamie walked over to us, and we were both looking at him, and I'm like, yeah, you probably should put a shirt on. Was he out there working with no shirt on all day, trying to get his Brad Pitt on? Is that what he was doing? He was out there working with no shirt on from about, eh, maybe you like 11, 11 <laughs> o'clock. No, he had his shirt on in the morning, and then as it got hotter, he took it off. So it was probably like 11 o'clock. And when Dan came over, it was about 4 o'clock. So. <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. But he wasn't he wasn't out there the whole day. He was in and out of the house, you know, like he wasn't out there the whole day. But he did get burnt. And uh it went from being red and this was actually in yesterday's vlog. He went from being red to being um he looks like a basted turkey. Yeah. Like it went from red to ridiculous. And then now today cuz that was what Saturday. Today it's finally starting to like peel and it's like and it's wednesday yeah it's wednesday and now he's itchy and uncomfortable and oh, so yeah jamie got sunburned so bad it looked so bad it's like yo bro have you ever not sunned before like what happened dude <laughs> yeah like you're yeah. smart jamie what'd you do what'd you do so do you want to hear something even funnier than that i do yesterday I was looking at my facebook memories as i do every day because facebook shoves your memories in your face and on the same day, so it would have been uh, June 30th, 2011, so nine years ago, I made a post on Facebook that said, wow, Jamie's sunburn looks so bad. He's in so much pain. 
Holy cow. So this has happened before. It's like the Olympics. Yeah. Every handful yeah. of years, he's just red-backed. I mean, it looks so yeah. bad. How did yeah. it not blister? I don't know, but it, it didn't. It, I think it's because once we realized he was burnt, he came inside and he put uh, aloe on it and then he put sunscreen on it. So I think he saved himself from blistering. I really do. I think that when he actually came in and we put stuff on it, I think that that really did save it from getting any worse. Yeah, that was that was bad news. I saved myself from sunburning too by uh, not, uh, not going outside. <laughs> not going outside. Yeah, poor Jamie. It hasn't been his week. No, no. From, do we have do we have more Jamie news? From getting sunburnt to getting kicked in the eyeball. Yeah, what's going on with that? Because I missed that. All of a sudden, <laughs> I open up. Here I am. I'm having a great day. Imagine everybody at home. Imagine me just walking through my house with my elbows out. I'm whistling songs, even though I can't whistle. I don't know how to whistle. There's my whistling. <laughs> I, I don't know how to whistle. And and then I'm like, Brink, oh, look, my bestie's sending me a message. I bet it's well wishes or something great. And then I open it up, and it's just an eye. It's just this red, <laughs> bloody-looking eye. And you know me and eyes. I, I don't see eye to eye with the eyes. And then you're sending me pictures of eyes, and it wasn't regular eyes or pretty eyes. It was bloody eyes. And I'm going like, eye, eye, eye. And then the first thing I think I said was delete that. I'm like, delete that. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? So what, what? What? What is going on? So he was snuggling on the bed with Kira, and she stretched and poked him in the eye with her paw, I guess, like her claw on her. It paw, looked I bad. Guess. Was he like, what the heck, or like in pain, or rolling around on the ground, or no? And that was the weirdest thing. Like there was very little reaction, I guess. Like I don't even think I heard him say "ow." He walked into the office after a few minutes and he goes, I'm okay. Don't freak out. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Oh my gosh, you've heard those lines before. Yeah. And he opens up his eye and I'm like, what the heck? And he's like, Kira poked me in the eye. I'm like, how on, like, how, like, what, like, what? What? (laughs) I really love your your Jamie impressions. You poked me Uh, in the eye. That's exactly what he sounds like. (laughs) That is great. That is exactly what he sounds like. Yeah, so she uh she poked him in the eye and it's uh it's still but we did the whole thing, like do we go to the doctor, do we not go to the doctor? And then I got online and I looked and I told him I'm like, Well, does it actually hurt? And he goes, It hurts. He goes, It just feels like pressure and I'm like, Okay, you know, like it wasn't, I thought he was going to get a black eye, but he didn't. I'm like, okay, well, it looks okay. And it, it seems it's like. It's all like broken blood vessels. That's what it is, right? Yes. Yeah, it's broken blood vessels. I have never so... had that before. Have you ever had that before? Yes, I have. Oh, I have never had that before. It's so freaky. It I would feels... poke my eye out with a fork. It feels like pressure. It feels like there's something inside your eye that's nope. just pressure. So we got online and I'm like, do you see any shadowing? And he's like, nope. I'm like, do you see any floaters? Nope. Do you see any like flashes of light? Nope. And then we got, you know, I got real close and I looked and I'm like, you don't have a scratch on it. Like we looked and like, and he goes, it doesn't feel like it's scratched. And I'm like, okay. And he wasn't rubbing it. He's like, it doesn't itch. It doesn't, he goes, it hurts. I feel the, the swelling. He goes, but other than that, it's fine. And I'm like, well, according to the internet, you know, because the internet knows everything. Mm-hmm, yeah. Unless you, I'm like, unless you experience any of these three things, if we take you to the doctor, they're just going to tell you to take some ibuprofen and put a cold compress on it. So that's what he did. He took some ibuprofen and we put a cold compress on it to help get the the pressure released. And um, it uh, looks, uh, I wish I could say better. It looks about the same. No, that's not true. It does look less red today. So it does look better, and it doesn't bother him at all. Like he said, he goes, it doesn't bother it me It still looked pretty bad. Last night, you're like, you want to see a picture of Jamie's eyes? I'm like, <laughs> not really, but okay. And then there it came. And yeah, no, that was bad. Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, he yeah. And a black yeah. eye. I don't know if I've ever had a black eye. I've had a faint tint before from playing hockey of, of, of faint tint. But I've never had like a true, like, look at my eye. Ask me my story. I've, right. never, ha- I've never had that. But Kira does but- like to smash with her paws uh there was yeah. one night i was laying on the ground and she comes over and i wasn't paying her enough attention and she sat and laid by me and then just thump right in my head yeah I'm like well that's one way to do it she doesn't have boundaries she's like oh you're not touching yeah. me Poof, here you go uh, touch me now tails does that to an extent i'll be laying there and tails will come and slowly put his paw on me 
and then his nails come out, and then he'll paw me and paw me and paw me when he wants something. Which Tails, and I don't know what this is going on with Mr. Tails. He's getting old. He's over 10 years right. old now. That guy is just d- done bathing. He's all, like, getting knots, and, like, I, I have to, like, try to, like, hold him down so we can, like, try to, like, brush him out. And I don't know. I think I'm going to take some clippers and, like, cut out these, like... These, like, dreadlocks that he's trying to grow. I'm not sure what he's trying to do, but he has <laughs> definitely given up on hygiene. Yeah, sometimes cats do that after a yeah, while. Yeah, I mean, but he's got that big fluffy hair. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I, I'm done combing my hair. That's We were talking about what day of the week it is and stuff like that. All I have to do for markers in my life is to count down to the times that I have to comb my hair again. So I get it, right? Mr. Tails. Like, I don't have to do my hair again until Friday for Dantic, so I'm not going to put any more dye in it and stuff to, like, Thursday night. So <laughs> I get it, Mr. Tails. But he is just he is just giving up. But he he uh, he does paw all over me. He's just like, thump, 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 thump. Like, hey, 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 he's learned. He's learned. It's probably quite different, though, when it's, like, an 18-pound animal compared to a 45-pound animal. <laughs> oh, yes. And I remember telling you guys how when I came back, all the cats looked so much tinier. Mooch looked so much littler than after hanging out with two weeks of Kira in Memphis. Like, everything's right? just so tiny and dainty compared to your big old dogs. But your dogs aren't even big. No, not really. But, I mean, compared to the cats, I guess they kind uh-huh. of are. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I have been thumped by Kira's stiff armies before so yeah poor yep. jamie's eye that's not bad yeah. yeah yeah so it's been a it's been an interesting few days around the around the hatch household yeah it's been sure. an interesting days around <laughs> here too we had this dust storm the other day so on like sunday it was not it was finally not hot in here like it was a nice cool day but cool beat means winds because i live in a valley and right. so i get up and we're cleaning the house and everything's getting a white down and i feel really good i don't have to have the swamp cooler on so that means that there's no huge like just that humming sound just kills you after a while you don't realize it until you turn it off and you're like oh my gosh it's gone but you got that humming sound and right and uh so i'm wiping everything down everything's clean the whole house is getting wiped down the windows are open and a big dust storm comes in where the i mean it's a dust storm like you get a white out with snow the streets you can't see across the street you just hear stuff pelting against like your car like when you're driving and right. as fast as i could run and shut all the windows the dust storm had completely layered everything in my house with uh, dust enough dust that it showed up on the pictures when i sent it to you yeah yeah it did yep. full on dust and dirt and i'm running around and trying to cover everything up and it was so bad it, it, it was so bad it was like having to clean the house all over again i had to take a canister of air and blow out all the podcast equipment all the nooks <laughs> and crannies i guess you could call it inside the microphone yep so it was super crazy I re- I remember that stuff from when we lived in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you get some of that, too. When I worked at yeah. NASA, we got one of those huge dust storms that come around every 40 or 50 years, and it blackened out the sky. I told the story before, and people were crying because it was after 9-11, so they thought something was on fire here because it was that dark from from all the dust and dirt. And you know, it's, and it's that really fine, fine grain dust that blows around and makes you right. sneeze, and it was everywhere in our house. And then, so then I walk out front. And those of you guys have watched the vlogs and stuff, you guys know my house layout. Like, on the front porch is all the plants, and then you go down these staircases to get out into, like, you know, the world, I guess you would call it. Right. And piled up on my porch is 20 tumbleweeds, like, maybe <laughs> maybe 15 by 15 feet by, like, 4 feet tall of just tumbleweeds. And tumbleweeds are, like, dried up plants that don't get in the water because we have, like, the d- desert out here. So they, they 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 shrivel up and they turn to sharp, pokey, round things. You guys have seen, have seen them in westerns and stuff like that. When we get the tumbleweeds out here, that's like our, like, like that's like our city bird. You know, they should have right. tumbleweed. I've always said they should have tumbleweed races out here where you just spray paint your number on the side of the tumbleweed and let them <laughs> roll up the street. You know, these ones are, like, 30 miles an hour. So the hugest collection of tumbleweeds, you know, the FedEx guy is not coming to my door. But then, again, people are staying off of my porch true but Very I'll, true i'll post a picture of the podcast notes but there's so many tumbleweeds that just blew on in around the corner and they parked right on my front porch it, it was it was really interesting to see how your house could go from clean to dirty in just a few seconds out there in michigan are you are you having to dust stuff a lot out there or not so much um i mean we get it depends on where you live so like there's a lot of people out here that live on dirt roads and dirt roads are I mean, they're not as bad as dust storms, but they kind of can be because if you live on a busy dirt road, what will happen is, you know, you get cars that drive down these dirt roads and they go to work and then they come home and they're doing 40 miles an hour down the dirt road. So they kick up all this dust that then floats in the air. And on windy days, it just blows right into your house. We don't live on a dirt road, so we don't actually have to deal with that that much. But we know people that do live on dirt roads and have to deal with it. So 
if you live on a dirt road and the dirt road hasn't been jamie's not here i don't know what it's called i think it's chloride i think they put chloride on the dirt roads and it's like this oily substance that makes it so the dust stays on the road and it doesn't work for forever it works for like a month or two and then they have to do it again so if your dirt road hasn't been chlorided you literally just it's just caked in dust but we deal with it more when we're jeeping if we go jeeping and we go on the back roads it's just clouds of dust so when you come out of the woods like there's dust in like the vents and in your face and you can feel oh, it in your right. hair yes. because you've been driving around with the top down so you kind of feel like you went through a dust storm so no it's not exactly the same thing as what you're talking about but i do know what it's like to be coated in dust and you know have to like oh now we have to clean everything and it's everywhere and like you can feel it in your teeth it's like okay this is this is that was a little bit too dusty if we go oh, jeeping yeah. when it's really dry that happens or if you go jeeping with a group of people you always want to be the first person in line because if you're not the first person in line you're the one that's coated in dust so the dust out here is probably a little bit different than the dust you guys have out there because out here it is so fine kind of like when you see like the sahara desert you see the camels walking and stuff like that where it's really fine where we try to ride a right. bike your front tire just gets sucked up by the dirt and you just go falling over everywhere so it's, it's like just real fine it's almost like beach sand it's just granules everywhere and and uh, and it just pelts your house, and it just it makes such a mess. And that, but that's something that's happened out here. You know, it's the desert. I literally live in what's called the. I literally live in what's called the high desert. Right, right, yeah. So we do get a yeah. lot of stuff out here. You can't make sandcastles with it at all. It's not like that kind of <laughs> dust, but it is right. dusty enough that it will put a layer in your house in like ten or fifteen seconds. And after you've already cleaned it, you have to redo it all yeah. over again. Yeah. Oh, yes. At least three times. Because the first time you wipe it up, it just turns back. It just turns like the mud. <laughs> so you have to do the house like 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 twice. So I was fighting with that. And then usually I have the sweet, sweet smells of the taco truck. Oh, right. But instead, I have asphalt smells. Even right now, whew, it just stinks like asphalt. Because they're out there repaving the road. Oh, so it's like that black nastiness. That black nastiness. And I have a swamp cooler, so it just sucks in that air. So for a few hours a day, I'm like, wow, it just smells like fast. It smells like what I think the set of the Fast and the Furious would smell like. Just all disgusting and black, right? And then we have no water again. You guys saw what happened on Dantix on on Friday (laughs) night, which was a great episode, by the way. That was so much fun. Oh, my god! But we had no water. Yes, that was... that was a really good episode. Yeah, we had no water then. We have no water now. And don't worry, they're just they're fixing lines and stuff, so they have to turn off the main here. So, you know, don't don't flush the toilet after remember that. Don't flush the toilet, don't flush the toilet, don't flush the toilet, don't flush the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been all the crazy things that have been going on here. Yeah, it's it's been a week, that's for sure, since uh since we talked last. Yes. And the, we should probably tell everybody that there's not a live stream today. Yes, we will not be doing a live stream this Wednesday just because uh, we're not doing a live stream this Wednesday, but we'll be back at it next Wednesday. And we'll have fun with it then. We'll have a bunch of stuff ready for you guys to do next Wednesday. But this Wednesday, everybody, you have our permission to take the day off, to go do your Zumba <laughs> classes or, or, or hang out on Zoom or whatever you guys do that you guys used to do on Wednesdays before we took up your Wednesday nights podcasting. Right. Yeah. But we'll be back next week. They're not over. I know people are already concerned if they're going to, if it's done and it's over yet. And no, it's, it's not over. Yeah, no, it's not over. We just all have like so much to do this week. It was just one of the things it was like, all right, we're just going to move it. We'll, we'll just do it next week. I need a break from it. I won't lie. I, I do need, I do need a break from it. Right. I do. I do. Let's here. Let's talk about one thing before we get out of here. Let's talk about one, not us thing. Okay. And this is the biggest, the biggest, uh, story of them all taco bell offers a free chalupa cravings box through their app but users face many tech issues so taco bell's trying to get everybody to use their app which i got a little bit of a beef oh i got a little bit of a beef burrito with taco <laughs> bell you know it's, it's it's a beef it's a beef burrito supreme if you will where right when you go to the taco bell app they do not have the same prices on the app as, as the store and if you type in your zip code if you're going on the dot com and you're trying to use the app there the prices change really yeah the prices change yeah the cravings box was like 9.99 but it's 11.99 at my non-participating taco bell huh and you know what, Chalupa, you guys had the triple Chalupa. I'm talking, everybody, you guys can talk so much yourself. I'm talking to Mr. Bell right here. Mr. or Mrs. Bell, whoever runs Taco Bell, I wanted a triplupa, but it sounds like Chalupa. So every time I order a triplupa, you guys give me a regular Chalupa. And now that I went back and I said I want the three-piece Chalupas, they're gone and they're out of stock. How are you out of think, season on that? I think it's called a Trilupa. Is that what it is? Is that, what, is that what's going on? 
Maybe that's why they couldn't understand you. Oh, man. But they're not around <laughs> anymore. They're not. I mean, but they still gave me a delicious chalupa. I don't know what it is about the chalupa. I think it's just the shell that I like of it. <laughs> but I really yeah. like chalupas. <laughs> well, you didn't get your. I don't know if it's a trilupa or a triplupa. I don't know. I well, don't know how to say it's it. It's gone and I'll never have it. But so this Cravings box, it's like 5 or $6 worth of food. It's like a medium drink. It's those like styrofoam cinnamon things. Right. It's a taco. It's a seven layer burrito or something like that. And a, and a chalupa supreme. But I tried this morning to sign up and try to get it to go and stuff like that. And you're right. It's there. Everybody is so trying to get one of these that you can't even sign up on the app. So is it like an always thing or was it a Tuesday only thing? I think it's like a today and tomorrow only thing or it was like till the 7th or the 6th. Like they're just doing it for like a week. So I think they're probably just doing it for like this week. And But nobody's able to get it and people are tweeting. I'm reading people's tweets where, you know, Taco, huh. Taco Bell. Taco Bell really dangled a chalupa box in my face, crashed the app, and they said deal with it. <laughs> yeah so i was all like ready to have my chalupa box and we were going to taste test it on the podcast but to no avail i could not sign up for it you're like i couldn't get it and that is this week in first world problems with dan yes yes <laughs> oh yes so uh, do you have anything to say oh yeah you know what i, I i'll say another thing real quick i watched that movie kina staten island i don't know if you've seen the previews for that because it's really weird now that all these movies that are going to go to the movie theater are just coming straight to like home video i guess you can call them right Ooh, that's an antiquated term direct to home video <laughs> right but it was on like i don't know i watched it on like itunes or something like that and it was a uh, pete Wentz, no pete davidson one of them's the guy from fallout boy one of them's the guy from saturday night live but uh <laughs> if you guys are wondering if that movie is good or not or not, you're going to get my opinion anyway. And I thought it was a lot. It was. I thought it was good. It was a really good movie. I haven't seen it. I'll it, have to put it on the It list. was good. Have you seen like the previews or anything for it? I don't know. I'd have to look. Oh. I'm. Re- you have to remember, I'm really bad with movies. I, uh, I, I work. Yeah, if it's not a Disney animation <laughs> or if it has nothing to do with Emperor's New Groove, you don't care about it. Pretty much. If there's not dogs in it, eh. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe there was a dog at the firehouse, but, uh, yeah, if you guys are wondering if that movie's good and worth watching it, I really super enjoyed it. I laughed. It was, it was a good movie. I'm looking through my list here of anything that we should talk about. And I love my list. Jamie Sunburn, Tails Gives Up on Grooming, Asphalt versus Taco Bells, Taco Bell, Asphalt versus Taco Smell, 300 million views, Dogster Mag. (laughs) And that's it. We did it. Yes. See, now we, now we've done our list and we can go home. All right. Which yeah, my mom's on her way over. <laughs> home for me is like just like my couch is right on the other side of my desk. Right. So that's right. home for me. <laughs> Anything else just before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I think that's uh, a <sighs> ah yes, just 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 under an hour. It's a quick good hangout with your friends. Oh wait. Is, oh, oh, yes. wait. oh wait. Oh wait. Yes. Wait. Wait. I gotta look it up to make sure I'm right before mm-hmm. I say it. But I'm pretty sure I'm right. Cause okay, I you I go ahead and is, you go ahead and look it up. Is it? Isn't it? It is. Happy Canada Day. Oh, yeah. It's Canada Day today. The day we're recording this is actually yes, Canada Day. Yes, Happy Canada Day. And I'm not sure what that means, obviously. I don't it's know. The, it's it's like their Independence Day. Canada celebrates their independence just like we celebrate, like the did, United States celebrates their independence. Right, so I'll, Canada does the same thing. All jokes. But did you guys really have to do it, like, on our weekend? You couldn't have spread this out a little bit? It's like <laughs> having two kids with the same birthday in the same months. Or it's like Jess having her birthday next to Christmas. Couldn't have, couldn't have waited, Mom. Where's Mom at? Is she coming over? I mean... You got to put I mean, her on this podcast. I got to ask her why. You couldn't wait. <laughs> Canada picked July 1st. So, I mean, even though it happened to us first, they picked the date that was closer, you know. So, technically, they're first. Right. They it, celebrate before us, even though it happened after us. <laughs> and it's hard because I don't know what happened or if there was a struggle or, or what happened for them. To, if it's their Independence Day as well or, or what's going on. But I did see this cute Reddit meme. And it was, uh, it was like a Canadian flag, and it was standing next to a U.S. flag, and it's like, hey, do you know what today is? And the U.S. flag says, yeah, three days till my birthday. <laughs> and I was like, that pretty much sums up America right there, right there. Yeah, so um, I hope it's a positive thing if I say, like, happy, happy Canada Day to, you know, we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of Canada people. We do. We have a lot of Canadian friends. Yes. Yes, so happy Canada Day, whatever that means to you. I hope you guys have today off, which is a Wednesday, and that's kind of odd. Canada's Canada's our neighbor to the north. Mm. Well, technically, technically, it's my neighbor to the north and the south and the east. <laughs> that is true, huh? Yeah, you're way up yeah. there. Yeah, you're way up there. No, it's it's just to the north of us. I'm way down in SoCal. I think I'm I'm obviously closer to Mexico than than. Uh, 
the Canada for sure. Right. Like that I could was be, the last thing. It's noon. I could be in TJ by three. All right. Yeah, yes. that was that was the only other thing. All I thought right. about it earlier and I wanted to say something and I forgot. <laughs> oh, yep. No, we're good. Let's let's wrap this up and get out of here and we can we can all go about our day. I hope everybody at home is having a great week as well. And let us know in the comments what you guys are doing for Fourth of July. Post your Fourth of July picks. We'll make a Fourth of July thread. We'll do that. We'll make a Fourth of July yeah, thread. Do that. Everybody can post their picks. I made a cool thread yesterday. Oh, here we go. We're more more podcast stuff. I made a cool thread yesterday about the toys. Like, hey, what oh, cool toys that. did you have when you were younger? And it was so cool to look at everybody's old toys going like, I forgot all about that. Somebody posted somebody posted the old picture of the farmhouse, like the Weeble Wobble like farmhouse thing. And I'm just old enough to go like, oh, my gosh, I had that toy, whether it was a hand-me-down or not. I was like, I had that. And so many we people. Should, uh, yeah, We should go over some of those pictures on the live stream. We can. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. We'll go over some of those pictures on the live stream, and, and, and we'll save it for then. And, and we'll, we'll talk about toys and stuff because a lot of them triggered memories. Yeah, and yeah, I know. I was going through it, too, going, oh, my gosh. And I remember that. And you can definitely see the age line. And I'm right on that line of the cusp of when people posted toys versus people that posted video games. So <laughs> I think that's cool. So, yeah, we'll do that next week on the on, on the live stream. We'll go over some things. Yeah, and that'll be that, some great interaction. Write that down so we don't forget. Oh, don't worry. But the, nobody lets me forget anything. You, you, know, you know how many times I get in my inbox on the Dantix days of don't forget to eat? So I love you yeah. guys for it because I'm pretty derpy. So thank you so much. So yeah, people will not let me forget that. So Good. all right, all right. If I don't start wrapping this up now, well, I'm just gonna carry on with more topics. And I know everybody at home's like more, 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 more. But you know, we'll save it for next week. That'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Listen to us every Wednesday on your favorite music app. Interact with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon at CC Mouse Podcast. Woo! Rep our merch at CC Mouse Podcast shop. That's enough directions for all you guys. So we'll see you next week. Say Mouse Time. Say Mouse Podcast. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yes. we did things. 77 things. <laughs>